Hi guys and welcome back to another Sonic Academy Tech Tip. In this one we're going to show you how to make use of dummy clips in Ableton Live. And it's particularly useful for live sets for sort of jumping in and out of effects patterns or creating your own effects patterns. You can use it in production as well. Um, but uh, I think it has most, most benefit in a live set. To do this, basically what we want to have is our main tune or our main output coming out of um, one of our tr tracks here. So I'm going to have audio track one and this is going to be our song and audio track two here is going to be well basically we need to create an audio track we need to call it fx chain and in here is where all of our uh, effects are going to happen so we want to send our song um, from audio track one here out to our effects chain so if we go down to the audio two section make sure our io button is selected at the right Go down to audio 2 and then select FX chain and then turn the monitor in on this. So we should be able to hear this now. And we can, so that's fine. And then the next thing we need to do is go into our FX chain and we need to go to our devices from um, the left hand side and go to audio effects and select the audio effect rack. Okay, now in here, if we click on this button here, which is the show hide chain list and we can drop some effects in here. So I'm just going to right click, create a chain, and I'm going to rename this, and it's going to be dry. I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to call this one delay. Create another one, I'm going to call it redux. Another one, we will call it phaser. And that'll do us. Okay, so basically we want to be able to jump back and forth between these. So in our delay, we're going to drop in a delay unit. So I'm going to go to our auto filter, or sorry, our filter delay. And I'm just going to drop in, just going to drop in a filter delay into there. It's the standard filter delay. And then the redux, I'm going to go and grab the redux. And I'm just going to drop that in. I'm going to turn the down sampling up a bit. And I'm going to be drop a, an auto filter in there as well. Do a bit of a high pass and then in our phaser go down and select a phaser and i'll just drop that in there so our dry has got nothing and the other three have got something going on in there and then the next thing we need to do is click on this chain button and now in here we need to select a, a different uh, zone for each of these so our dry will be zero our delay we need to just catch this uh, this wee block here and we need to move this to the right one and then we need to grab our redux and move it to the right to two and then our last one we need to move it to the right until we hit three so dry is on um zone number one delay is on or sorry our dry is on zero delay is on one redux is on two and phaser is on three and the cycle between these um, you need to actually go in to uh, a parameter inside of something that we're going to set up next. And to do that, we need to actually bring in a dummy clip. This is this is where the word dummy clip comes from. So we need to bring in an audio sample that is just going to um, play around. Um, you're not ever going to hear it. It's just going to be there so that we can actually change the values of the, the zones inside of this chain section here. Um, to do that, I'm just going to, you can bring in anything, but I'm going to bring in um, a loop from our tune that we've got here. So I'm going to create a loop, and I'm going to make it four bars long. And the main reason I'm doing this is so that um, for the later benefit of being able to have a effect scene that changes throughout four bars and automates itself. So I'm just going to right-click and crop this. So we've got a four-bar loop. And I'm going to bring that across into our effects chain track. And I'm going to rename this one to um, dry. I'm going to duplicate this down. And I'm going to rename the next one delay, redux, and phaser. OK, so if we double click on our dry and go down to our MIDI clip envelope, button at the bottom left here. From our envelope section, we need to select our audio effect rack. And then the chain selector is the one that we want to select here. 
And from this, this is where we select the actual zone that we're in. So at the minute, that's at zero, which is fine because that's where the dry signal is going to come from. Our delay is going to come from zone number one. So we need to move this up to one. Um, our redux, we can move it up to two. Phaser, we can move it up to three. Okay, so every time this is, phaser is played, it changes the zone from our audio effect rack to zone three, and that'll play through the phaser. And then if we just hit play on our track, I'll just select a part further on. Now if I select our delay, Redux, and then our phaser. So you can see how that could be really handy in a live set if you're able to just jump back and forth between these. If you assign these to maybe a MIDI controller or even just keys on your keyboard, you can easily jump back and forth between those. And the next thing I wanted to do, the main um, benefit of having this uh, four bar loop that I s selected earlier, is if we just duplicate down another phaser or another one of these ones here, I'm gonna rename this one to, um, let's call it Automate. And in here, uh, you see you're not limited to actually just playing your delay. So in our delay track, we could, for example, have a delay with maybe the delay time changing, or we could have a, a redux with the, the redux uh, down sampling changing. Um, so I'll just, I'll do a, an example of that first. So move this automate down. So I'll put a delay and I'll rename the delay to uh, mod delay. So we could have maybe some something changing in the delay. So if I double click on that, um, go into our delay from the list. So we've got our filter delay, and then we could maybe change the change the delay time. We could have that automating down. We could have the feedback of number two. We could maybe have this automating up, and these all work as a percentage of the value that's selected. So if we go back into our delay, um, 100% of the feedback of number two is going to be 46%. Um, if we were to set that to 100%, then we could obviously have a maximum of being the 100%. So if I just play this, select the delay, you can see it's changing here. If I put that up to 100. So you can see there that automates throughout the time. So what I'm gonna do with this last automation slot here is I'm just going to jump back and forth between the different um, effects that we have set up. So I'm just going to put in a couple of random parts, see how it sounds. This is just selecting different effects on our chain. We select our automate. I'll select a different part of our tune. Drop back to your dry. So you can see how you can create something uh, quite advanced by just going into these individual chain parts and actually um, automating the different parts uh, yourself to make something a bit more advanced. Okay, so I hope this gives you a few ideas in your, for your live sets, and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.